Hello, this is Ken Ferry with this week's Boats in the Field report. As we move into the yield map season, I would like to take some time and talk about how we get the most out of our yield maps. Talking with new customers or prospect customers about yield maps, sometimes you get a lukewarm feedback about the value of the yield map. When growers are not excited about their yield maps, it usually means in the past they have not gleaned much information from these yield maps. The cause for this can be several reasons. Not setting enough time aside to give them a good look, poorly calibrated yield maps that don't show any spatial differences. Many team members never see the yield maps. It just takes too much time out of the day. Going through the yield maps at the end of the year should be a team event. Set aside a day or two to bring the team together to go over the yield maps as a team. Bringing all background data to the yield map meeting, such as the original plan. What was laid out before this season started? And then how was it changed as the year unfolded? Bring all the planting and application records, planting dates, what the varieties and hybrids and where they went, types of tillage, herbicides used, fungicides, insecticides, fertilizer application records, maps. If possible, bring the application maps if you have them. Invoices tell us what the total amount on the field was, but not exactly where it went in the field. This is especially true with VRT, pre-plant, and nitrogen applications, as well as you guys that are VRT in your population. It's crucial to have the pest team at the yield map meeting with all their scouting reports from each field throughout the year. Starting with those emergence reports, all the way to that post-harvest reports where we talk about ear count versus population. As well as any extra data they've collected, the pest team, uh, such as aerial pictures, drone imagery, any of that, it all needs to come. Any notes scribbled down in your small pocketbook uh, notebooks, they need to come as well as any memories tucked in the back of their mind as far as what might have happened during that growing season. Now you know why I say set aside a day or two for the yield map meetings every year. If your farm operation is not a one-person operation, then viewing the yield maps should not be either. Think of viewing yield maps at the end of the year like viewing game tapes after the game to analyze what went wrong and what went right and how to use this information to better play the next time you're out on the court. We need all the players and managers to view the yield maps. When key people are missing when we're viewing the game tapes, in the next game the team members won't all be pulling in the same direction. Too many times some very powerful data comes out of the yield map meeting but does not get implemented because the farm manager was too busy to be in the yield map meeting. If you're the farm manager and you're too busy to attend the yield map meeting, you need to dedicate that job to someone else and be sure to give that person the power to implement the things learned in the yield map meeting. Set aside the time and bring all the players and data together. Have a format, whether it's on paper or on a big screen TV, so everyone can see the data. Let's start with how we display the data. Always display the data in the raw data points. Do not krieg or contour your data. If you have good spatial data, yield differences will pop out of that map right in front of you. The objective is to look for real zones in the map, not computer-generated zones. Well-calibrated monitors produce good spatial maps. Good spatial maps do not need any krieging or contouring to tell the story. Poorly calibrated monitors produce maps with no definition and show very little spatial variability. Yes, we can create or contour a poor map to make it look like there's different yield zones in the field, but it's just fake news. Poor quality yield maps are the number one reason farmers do not value a yield map meeting. When you must convince yourself the map is telling you something or contour to find any zones, most likely it's a poor map. Poor quality yield maps can be the result of 
mechanical issues, down corn, weather changes, operator changes, but the number one reason is poor calibration or no calibration. Maps with poor spatial variability can still be accurate to the scale ticket. This is why many farmers get confused with what is a good map. Being accurate to the scale ticket and producing a spatial accurate map are two different things. Calibrating a combine to spatial accuracy takes time. Many operators do not want to take the time to calibrate the combine in the rush of the harvest season. Many farm managers don't give the operators time to calibrate their machines. I'll be honest with you, with new customers, we find about half of them have poor yield maps because of this, they do little with them except maybe keep inventory. When the maps do not tell you much, they quickly become of little need. This is one of the reasons all players must be present to view the game day footage. If you're a combine operator and everyone on your team is counting on you to produce a good map for the end of the year viewing, you're more likely to take the time to get it right. Once we get our customers trained to produce a good spatial map, we see the lights turn on. All the players are starting to see how their participation plays in some part to the results. Managers understand why they must give operators time, training, resources to do a combine calibration. Pest team members begin to realize their scouting reports, soil tests, and information gathered throughout the year are now important. Planner and applicator operators now know their as-applied maps and personal notes and memory recalls on each field is important. Managers start to use this year's information to make changes in hybrid placement, fertilizer applications, etc. for next year. Using what we learn to improve the outcome of the next time is what it's all about. Instead of just repeating what we've always done in the past and expecting the different results. A good yield map meeting starts with a good yield map. Then add all the players and bring all the background data and you have the components for a good end of the year yield map meeting. When displaying the map, we recommend setting the key to show spatial variability of your raw data. I like to use 7 to 10 breaks in my key and set it at equal points in each break. Using a variation from red, yellow to green, red is usually our low yields, green is our high. If some of your team members are colorblind, you may have to find a different range that works best. First thing we look for on a yield map are what we call man-made yield changes. Obvious yield changes made by some man-made cause. These yield changes are usually straight lines in the field. The first step is to figure out whether they are real or not. False lines in the field may be caused by harvest date, combine speed, uh, rain or snow during harvest, multiple combines in the field, but they're not real. It's just recording is poor. True straight line yield changes can be a variety change, fertilizer change, might run out of anhydrous uh, halfway across the field and the operator kept going or run out of starter for a pass herbicide misapplication, skips with the fungicide application, those cause straight lines, but they're real. You may have to go all the way around the room asking everyone for input as well as looking at aerial images to find that answer. When you get good at it, on-farm field trials will be man-made lines in the field. The yield map meeting is where everyone gets to learn the results of their on-farm trials. With on-farm trials, I recommend adding a scale cart so you have actual weights and make sure you're dealing with the right numbers. Next we look for zones in the field with yield swings and see if we can explain those zones. They're usually related to drainage, soil type, topography, pH, and so on. We look back in our history to see if they're repeating occurrences and if so how often and when. This is when we have the discussion about planting populations, the need for added drainage, what some possible management changes uh, we could put in place to combat those zones. Many yield zones reoccur, but only with certain growing conditions. Maps in 2012 highlighted the light ground in the field, while in 2015 all the low ground and site hill seep areas. 
These maps are talking to you and telling you where the weakness is in this field so you can put a plan together to farm around that weakness. If you stack multiple years of data together and try to generate an average yield zone map, the 2012s wash out the 2015s. Look at each hybrid and variety and field separately as well as each year separately. After we identif identify those zones that correlate to some underlying factor that we can relate it to, then we look for zones that do not correlate to the information we have on the field. We do the same. We look back in history to see if this zone shows up in the past or is it a one-time deal. One-time deals can be things like herbicide drift, windstorm damage, insect attacks, for instance, like a spider mite on the edge of the field. It is important to identify these zones, but we may not make changes to next year's plans because of them. When we have zones with some repeatability, and we don't have the information amongst the team present to answer the riddle, we may need to implement more strategies to find that answer. We may subdivide these zones into new yield zones to be soil tested separately. We may take a deeper dive on that soil test looking at micronutrients as well as parasitic analysis. The pest team will want to be sure this area gets scouted during the growing season and may want to pull a tissue test out of this area and compare it to a good area that's nearby. Sometimes it may take a deeper look, literally. In 2012, we dug soil pits in new yield zones to find out they were sitting on a sand lens, giving us a perched water table. The important thing is, is you're in the hunt to figure out, is this something I can manage around? As we make all these revelations about our maps, we need good note takers. We need to be writing on these maps. We need to be keeping these notes because we need to build a plan to go forward. After looking at all the maps as a group, answer the so what questions. Where did this hybrid shine? Where did it fail? Does that tell me something about the hybrid? And next, if next year's weather was the exact same as this year, what would we do different? What field trials could we try next year to answer some of those questions? We look at hundreds of yield maps every fall. Once we get a farm operation producing good maps, and then they get all the team members involved with the yield map viewing, we start to see the whole team step up because they know what they do makes a difference. Many of this year's yield maps will be in Zoom format, which will change things some, but it's not an excuse to forego them. Use the yield map meeting to get your team on the same page and pulling in the same direction. We here at CropTech want to thank you for your business in 2020 and wish you the happiest of holidays and a joyful and profitable new year. To stay up to date, check out our website at croptechinc.com and subscribe to our podcast, Boots in the Field Report. Keep her safe, keep her moving.